Um, yeah, so I'm working at ADA, uh, customer support uh, company. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more what we do. And today I'm here to present some work we've been doing on the ML team on automatic evaluation of dialogue systems. And I, I'm sure everybody knows uh, LM have disrupted the ML world and um, and the evaluation of uh, systems that are built using LM is a real challenge. So I'm going to present how we try to solve that at ADA. Um, and yeah, and the idea also at ADA is that we want to deliver uh, products that are amazing and impactful. So the evaluation is very important to make sure that we are actually um, enabling uh, customers to solve their problems. Um, so yeah, so the, the framework I'm gonna present is gonna help us understand if we can do that with the LMs. Uh, so first, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do at ADA. Uh, then I'll talk a bit about the evaluation challenges uh, that we encounter. And um, then I will um, talk about the framework bot v bot that we uh, developed at ADA. So ADA is a customer support service, uh, a customer service automation company. And uh, the goal is that we deliver a, a, an AI platform that is enabling businesses to automatically resolve the most customer service conversation with the least effort. So we're really um, uh, trying to have something that is easy uh, to build and use for our uh, clients. And um, we originally we were doing chatbots, but we've extended to other channels like social media uh, SMS, voice automation, emails. And recently we've been integrating uh, LMs into our products to enable our customers to have more natural uh, conversations. Uh, before that, we would actually use um, declarative flows, so some more scripted stuff. Uh, and it was working pretty well, but it doesn't allow uh, the, yeah, the natural conversation that you can get with an LM. So the problem with um, integrating LM into our application is the evaluation uh, problem, like the challenge of evaluating um, uh, the use of LM in the products. Um, and historically, uh, to evaluate dialogue system, people would use some specialized data sets. Uh, there are a few, like multi wars for example, which is a task-oriented dialogue um, a system data set that is trying to see if uh, the user are able to achieve a number of tasks. Um, there are also uh, some question answering data set that could be used for evaluating dialogue systems and um, a number of metrics. Um, so a few popular ones are uh, blue and rouge and uh, blue and rouge are overlap metrics uh, that usually compute um, the degree of similarity between a generation, the text that was generated, and a set of references. Uh, so I put a, uh, an example here of, um, of, uh, of a computation of the Rouge score. Um, so it's a very simple example. Let's say that uh, a model generated, I need to change my credit card, and the reference was my credit card needs, my credit card needs replacement. Uh, we can see that the Rouge score that was computed over several n grams has a pretty low score. Um, it's not great. Um, so yeah, so that's one of the problems with uh, with metrics like blue or rouge is that um, there's not really a lot of space for creativity. Uh, the scope is pretty limited. Um, another challenge that I didn't actually put on the slide, but that exists with LMs, is that we're not necessarily sure uh, that the model was trained on existing data sets so that could cause a problem as well and um, yeah so we are trying to solve some complex task in in our case it's trying to make sure that users are achieving um, what they want like that they get answers or solutions to their problem and there are a number of challenges associated with that like i said before LM are super powerful. You can have very natural conversations, uh, but the problem is you want to also make sure that the generation that you're going to provide to the user are going to be safe, accurate, and relevant. 
So recently, there has been some work uh, in the ML world to overcome those challenges. Um, one example is a Helm dataset uh, that has been developed by the University of Stanford. And they propose uh, an evaluation set uh, for foundational models with a lot of different scenarios and metrics. Uh, for scenarios, for example, uh, you can try stuff like Q&A, information retrieval, sentiment analysis. Uh, for metrics, they have um, some metrics on bias, toxicity, uh, more general information like the number of tokens uh, the LM used, uh, some copyright metrics as well. Um, so it's a data set really trying to cover a lot of aspects. Um, you also have uh, some initiatives like Chatbot Arena, uh, which uh, ask a user to compare the output for two different LMs. So you're basically chatting uh, with two uh, different chatbots at the same time, and you are asked at the end of your conversation or at any point in your conversation to decide which um, which uh, model was better. And so there is a, a, leader, a leaderboard um, on the chatbot arena website with all the different LMs models. Um, and then some there were also some other metrics that were more subjective uh, so from the lambda paper for example uh, some subjective measures that would uh, correlate with human judgment uh, so among them uh, there was interestingness uh, which is how how much information that is given can the user actually use uh, specificity is the answer that was given by a model um, specific to the actual context context of the question um, there is also groundedness to see if the, the answer is grounded uh, in known sources. And so all of these are focusing more on quality, uh, uh, the quality of the generation. And in our case, al although we are interested in the quality and the groundedness, uh, and I guess interestingness as well, uh, we really want to focus on the fact that uh, we are enabling the user to achieve uh, the goal. Like, uh, yeah, we, we really want to focus on the, the task and the output. So it's important for us to, rather than consider things turn by turn, actually take into account the whole conversation between uh, a, a, a language model and a user. Um, so we could use some human annotations and annotate conversations and uh, with metrics like uh, the one proposed in Lambda, for example, but this is very expensive and um, also could take a lot of time. So how can we evaluate customer support dialogue systems? Um, so we can still measure specific components using some of the metrics I presented before. We can ensure that generation are safe, that they're accurate and relevant. So safe, meaning they, they are respectful, contain no harmful and con toxic content, uh, accurate meaning that they are correct, uh, the answer generated are correct and up to date and relevant, meaning that uh, the information that is provided is um, related to the customer's inquiry. Um, but again, so there are limits to, to this measure because although it's really important to ensure that, we also want to un understand what's going on end to end and if the, pro the customer's problem is solved. So this is where uh, we propose to leverage an LLM for testing uh, by creating a bot that is going to simulate a customer. And this is where we propose the bot v bot uh, testing framework. And um, this framework is great because it allows us to simulate conversations, uh, a lot of conversations in a few hours and to also um, uh, get some metrics for them. I, I will talk about this uh, after. But yeah, it's very easy with this framework to um, run an experiment for a new prompt, a new model, uh, or anything else, and, and get results uh, really fast. Uh, but OK, so this is the framework. We, we're going to simulate the user. Uh, now we still want some application metrics uh, that are going to help us understand if uh, the task the customer was trying to achieve were achieved or not. So this is where we bring uh, automated resolution rate. So uh, this is a metric we use at ADA to ensure that our conversation are solved. Uh, and so the automated resolution is a conversation between a customer and a business that is relevant, safe and accurate and fully automated. 
And it's a way to ensure that we resolve the customer inquiry without the involvement of a human. Uh, what's great with this metric is that it helps clients understand when there is room for improvement. If we only have 50% of uh, resolution, uh, maybe there is also uh, things to improve um, in the knowledge base, uh, etc. Uh, and it's also a metric that general generalizes well in the sense that um, with customer support, our, our, our bots can um, either answer question or perform some task for the user. For example, if you wanted to uh, update your email address. So with this metric, we can still measure uh, that both tasks are solved without changing the measure. Uh, so the way we measure automated resolution uh, at Ada, we, we randomly sample some conversation from uh, a client bot. And then an, element, an LLM is going to assess uh, for each uh, of those conversations, whether it's solved or not, uh, whether it's resolved or not. So the conversations are solved or marked as resolved, otherwise they're marked as not resolved. And uh, we're calling automated resolution uh, the one that are resolved. OK, so now that I explained the metric, um, I can explain a little bit more about the different components in BotVBot. Um, so there are four main components and we have uh, what we call an offline phase and a test phase. So during the offline phase, we're basically going to create the users that are going to interact with our production bot. Um, so to do that, uh, we're going to have first a dialogue scenario generator. Uh, which is going to generate a set of tasks. So it could be questions, it could be some actions uh, that the user wants to accomplish. And this can be reused by several uh, simulated users. Uh, and then we're going to use uh, those uh, scenarios um, and generate some simulated users. And for the simulated users, uh, what's going to be important is the sources of variability. We're basically going to use an LM to um, uh, pretend to be a user and we're gonna uh, give different criteria like uh, different personalities, uh, different um, occupations um, to simulate the user. So we're giving us a, a scenario to simulate the user. So once we have that, uh, we can then uh, run tests against uh, the production bot. So we're gonna have the conversation run with the conversation, uh, conversation runner module which is basically going to facilitate the conversation between the bot, uh, which is a simulated user, and the production bot. And then we're going to run uh, our AR um, estimator, or our evaluation module, which is comprised of our AR estimator and other metrics like safety, accuracy, relevancy, etc. So I just wanted to uh go a bit deeper into the dialogue scenarios and the simulated user because um the key aspect of bot vbot to work is to generate it, to generate uh some data that is going to be like some simulated user that are going to be realistic uh, uh and um that are going to be um uh, representing a variety of tasks and users um, so to, to generate the, the task, so uh, either the questions or the actions, uh, we can do it um, like we do it currently in two different manners. You can have, um, you can either use uh, the knowledge base of a client and then extract some questions uh, from there and uh, create a lot of questions that can be used um, for the simulated users. Or we can also use real conversation between users um, and bots in prod, uh, some historical data um, that has been anonymized. And we extract um, questions um, from, we extract question and, and, uh, and uh, action from this uh, conversation. So yeah, so this is one way of, um, of generating the dialogue scenarios. And um, then what's super important as well is uh, simulated users. So the challenge here is making sure that um, the distribution of the data is going to be similar to what we have in production. Um, so one way you can 
uh, also ensure that is using your historical data, your production data um, to extract some features that can be used for the simulated user generator. And we also want um, to make sure that there is a lot of variety. So we can either use different LMs, um, diff like play with the parameters. For example, we can uh, set the temperature to zero if we want it, you know, something which is going to be more um, reproducible, but like we can increase if we want more creativity. Uh, we're going to have different personas, like it can be a user who is going to be uh, frustrated or super patient, super nice. Um, and also uh, we're going to have different conversational style. So the conversational style would be something where the user is either um, speaking in a very concise uh, way or in a more verbose way. And uh, yeah, and using those different um, these different uh, features, you can uh, generate uh, your users. So I just wanted to show a quick example uh, of uh, some gener uh, generated uh, simulated users. Uh, so this one was uh, professional and polite, and um, we see that. Uh, it say, hello, I'm interested in finding wedding dress in a specific color and fabric. So it's pretty classic. And then we have the answer from the bot uh, and the bot is helping uh, answer the question. And then we could have something uh, where, the, um, where the user is uh, frustrated and upset. Uh, I'm not happy with this at all. I just want to know if you have any sales price, that's too much to ask. And, and then we see the, the target bot is also answering the, the question. So the idea is really to try to represent a lot of variation. So we see how our production bots are answering the question of different users. Uh, I just wanted to finish with uh, an example of application. Um, so we used recently uh, Boss VBot to uh, be able to make decisions uh, concerning different uh, models that we want to use in prod. And so we can see here, um, like on the left, you see the, the AR percentage. So the number of resolution the model is achieving that we measure to, thanks to this framework. Uh, and also the bot uh, latency um, and uh, depending on the models that was used. So this is also something uh, that is important for us uh, to make sure that we offer uh, solutions with uh, optimized latency. Um, so yeah, so this is just an example. I didn't put the names of the model, but yeah, uh, we, we tried different and, and, uh, we can see that for example, uh, the blue, uh, model on the top left, uh, has a, has a better, uh, resolution and a better latency. So this is probably a good solution. Uh, but yeah, this is just to give you uh, an idea. And so. We have a, a great framework um, that is enabling us to test rapidly and at scale. Uh, it's also, we also have a, a metrics that enable us to iterate fast. And uh, every time we bring a new change, we're not able to uh, test rapidly the impact of that change and understand if this is something that should be brought into prod or not. And um, it's great to get this immediate feedback uh, on the new changes we're introducing. And um, you can also make uh, this uh, framework part of continuous integration. You can make it a GitHub action, for example, and run it uh, on a pull request. 